Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander. I'm BK, and today's game has Chris with Yuriko, the Tiger's Shadow. He's trying to reveal big mana value spells off the top of his library with Yuriko's ability. I'm piloting Krenko, Mob Boss, and I'm looking to overwhelm my opponents by making as many goblins as possible. Kyle's playing Lathral, Blade of the Elves, Golgari Elf Tribal, with a whole bunch of backup plans to make sure he can squeak out the win. J-Man is playing Kalia of the Vast, hoping to cheat out angel demons and dragons onto the battlefield for free. So let's get this game started. Chris won the die roll, so he'll kick us off by playing a Swamp as his land for turn, and playing a Tormented Soul, a 1-1 unblockable creature that also can't block. On to my turn, I play a Mountain as my land, and say go over to Kyle. He'll drop a very pretty forest, as well as Wirewood Symbia, enabling some bouncing and untamping shenanigans on his board. On to J-Man's turn, he plays a Tapped Blood Crypt, and he passes over to Chris, who plays an Island as his land, and then he goes to combat, attacking me for one, for no reason. Before damage is dealt, he ninjutsus out Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow, dealing me one point of commander damage, and then revealing the top card of his library. In this case, it's Diabolic Vision, so each of his opponents will lose two life. Then he passes over to me, I play a mountain as my land, and cast Dragon Fodder, giving me two adorable 1-1 goblin creature tokens. I pass the turn over to Kyle, he'll draw and play Command Tower as his land, and with that, he'll cast Fauna Shaman, allowing him to discard creatures to go find creatures from his library. He chips away at Chris's life total with Wirewood Symbiote and passes over to J-Man. He drops Spectator Seeding as his land and passes over to Chris again. He'll play another Swamp, and then he'll recast Tormented Soul. Then he'll follow that up by casting Diabolic Vision. He'll look at the top five cards of his library, put one of them into his hand, and the rest back onto the top of his library, in any order which is probably pretty good with Yuriko. He goes to combat, swinging at J-Man for one. Then he reveals Fallen Shinobi off the top of his library. I wonder if that was just put there. So we all lose five life and he passes over to me. I drop a mountain as my land and I cast Warren Instigator, a double strikey goblin that'll allow me to cheat out goblins every time he hits an opponent. I send my two goblin tokens at Chris's face, dropping him to 37. Kyle draws for turn, and on his first main phase, he'll activate Fauna Shaman, discarding an Immaculate Magistrate, and finding a Llanowar Elves that he shortcuts out onto the battlefield. He then passes the turn over to J-Man, who plays a Plains, as his land for turn. Then he plays the other Kalia, Zenith Seeker, and when this ETBs, he can look at the top six cards of his library. If he finds an angel, a demon, and or a dragon card, he could put them into his hand. In this case, he only finds an Abyssal Persecutor. That goes to his hand, and then he passes the turn over to Chris, who plays another Swamp as his land. And then he'll cast Smoke Shroud on Yuriko, the Tiger's Shadow. This gives it plus one, plus one, and flying. He moves to combat at me for some reason, thanks Chris. Then he reveals a 4-drop off the top, Mokotai Ambusher, so we all lose 4 life, and that goes to his hand. On his end step, I cycle Forgotten Cave, and I get to draw a card. Over to my turn, I draw and drop another mountain, surprise there. I move right into the red zone at Chris, seeing as he's picking on me. My first strike damage will resolve for Warren Instigator, I drop an Arms Dealer for free off of that. And then, normal combat damage resolves, and I put a Goblin Instigator on the battlefield with Warren Instigator's second trigger. So now, I have six Goblins and I'm happy. I cast my commander, Krenko, Mob Boss. He enters the battlefield. He doesn't have haste, which is very sad, but you know, it is what it is. On to Kyle's turn, he plays Prismatic Vista, paying one life and cracking it to go and find a beautiful Kamigawa full art swamp. All I'm gonna say is, I'm just attacking Chris. I mean, I'll be I'll be friends if you want to be friends. It's a, I mean, if you choose not to be friends, it's up to you. Do you want to be friends with Brandon? I would like to be friends. More friends. So Kyle and I make an uneasy friendship. Maybe he won't betray me this time like he almost always does. So anyway, he cast a Beast Whisperer. Then he moves to combat at Chris, dropping him to 31. On to J-Man's turn, he plays a beautiful Haunted Ridge. And then he casts Linvala, Keeper of Silence, which is wonderful for my deck and Chris's deck and Kyle's deck. He moves to combat with Kalia, taking Chris down to 28. And over to Chris's turn, he plays Dark Ritual on his first main phase. This gives him enough mana to cast Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni, which this could allow him to start grabbing some creatures out of his opponent's graveyards. He moves to combat at me, no surprise there, and I just take it, going to 24. 
He reveals Throat Seeker off the top of his library, so each one of his opponents loses three life. And I'm eyeballing that Linvala with so much hatred right now. I angrily play a mountain. I mean, Are you ready for this? this? Mind's Eye. Spoiler alert, I hate that card. You hate that card I so hate much. that card so much. So I could draw one card for six mana. I realize that red doesn't have all that many card draw effects outside of impulse draw. If you have different thoughts on Mind's Eye or other card draw in red, let me know. We'll fight about it in the comments. Anyway, I attacked Chris, and on Kyle's turn, he casts Kenrith's Transformation on Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. So Yuriko becomes an elk, and Kyle plays Undergrowth Stadium before passing the turn over to J-Man. J-Man plays a Plains as his land for turn, and then he casts Desecration Demon, which has an interesting each combat step ability where an opponent can sack a creature and tap down that Desecration Demon. He moves to combat at Kyle, swinging Kalia Zenith Seeker, and dropping Kyle to 22. Over to Chris's turn, he plays his Throat Seeker for full rip. This is largely due to J-Man's Linvala preventing him from ninjutsuing anything out. So Chris goes to combat at each one of us. Ink Eyes at me, Elkified Yuriko at Kyle, and Tormented Soul at J-Man. We all take the damage, and thanks to Ink Eyes, Chris gets my Goblin Instigator out of my graveyard, along with a 1-1 Goblin token. Onto my turn, I play another Mountain as my land for turn, and I say go because I can't activate Krenko and I'm very sad. Village Rites is cast on my end step, so Kyle sacrifices his Wirewood Symbiote, drawing a couple of cards, and onto his turn he draws, in which this time I respond with Mind's Eye and draw a card myself. On his first main phase, he casts Gnarl Root Trapper. This triggers Beast Whisperer, so I decide to pay another and draw a card myself off of Mind's Eye. He casts Elvish Champion, pumping his team, and passes the turn to J-Man. When he draws, I also draw. He drops Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, as his land, and then he casts his commander, Kalia of the Vast. With that, he'll go to his combat step. Desecration Demon will trigger. Chris decides to sacrifice my Goblin Instigator, putting it back in my graveyard, in order to tap down Desecration Demon. Then J-Man attacks Chris with Kalia Zenith Seeker. And the rest of us complain about Linvala. While it is slowing me down, my hope is, is that Chris somehow kills you, then me and Jeremiah kill Chris, and then I somehow beat Jeremiah. Will that happen? No. But that is the best I can hope for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a full rip Skull Snatcher hits Chris's board, allowing him to start exiling things from players' graveyards if it deals combat damage. He moves to combat at the three of us again, dropping us to 20, 17, and 11, respectively. Again, he gets my Goblin Instigator out of my graveyard, and I throw another Goblin token at him. And because I did not block his Ink Eyes, thanks to Throat Seeker, he gets five points of life. On his end step, I am able to cast Massive Raid, targeting Linvala, and dealing it six points of damage based off the amount of creatures I control. And with great joy, I activate Krenko Mob Boss. Give me my tokens back, good <laughs> sir. I clean up the board state a little bit, and then onto my turn, I clean it up more. I draw, drop a mountain as my land for turn. I cast Perforos, God of the Forge allowing me to start dealing two points of damage to each opponent whenever a creature of mine ETBs. And with that, I activate Krenko. I'll get a smooth 12 goblin creature tokens onto my battlefield. Oh, so I live. Left. For now. <laughs> and yes, Chris, you do live by three points, but sadly for Kyle and J-Man, I dealt enough damage to knock them out of the game. And with that, they'll clean up their boards. I'll move right into the red zone with all of my eligible creatures at Chris, and that will deal enough combat damage to also knock him out of the game, making me the winner. Yay. Well, that Linvala from J-Man certainly slowed things down a little bit, but thankfully, Krenko was able to take the win. And let's not forget that mind's eye. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching.